Welcome to the Hersey House. I'm Jeremiah Hersey. And today we're going to be talking about how to take your form and break it up into multiple pieces and still retain your data and submit it as one record. So let's take a look at make.powerapps.com. I want to show you that if I insert my form, select my data source, all of these fields pop up. Now, of course, our field is a column. They just recently changed the name. So you could have potentially 50, 60 columns in a table. That's a lot of information to scroll through if you're submitting a form. So it's easier if we break it into small chunks, kind of like if you went to a doctor's office and fill out the, the onboarding information on a tablet. You go through each section, your personal information, your health history, stuff like that. Same general idea. So each one of these forms is going to have a particular number of columns inside the form. So for this first one, I just want to have, let's say, the first three columns, title, number, and address. So I'll just remove these extra forms. Of course, we could do it over here in the edit fields and remove them this way. But it's a little bit quicker just to delete. So there is our first form section, okay? So we're gonna create two more form sections and that's gonna allow us to enter just a few bits of information each time instead of a whole collective form. So let's create a new screen. We're gonna insert our form again Select the same data source as the first one, but this time I'm going to delete the first three and the last two. So you want to make sure that each of your forms has the same data source and the most important piece of this is on the item property. So on the item property, you want to use the defaults property and select your SharePoint list. What the defaults property does is that it allows the information to be stored inside of the SharePoint list temporarily. So it kind of holds it in the background, kind of like a collection, but we're not creating a collection here. So item property, defaults, and then your SharePoint list. You're gonna do this for each of the forms after the first one. So we don't need to do it on the first form, just any subsequent forms. So let's go ahead and put in one more. I'll go ahead and get rid of these fields and I want to enable attachments okay this is very important because when you're using a patch command attachments aren't currently an available option so if you wanted to use a patch command you wouldn't be able to attach any documents with that this is a workaround. So we're still gonna use a patch command, but we're gonna use an update form function or a command that allows us to bring in the information from the forms. Let's add a couple buttons first. I'm making sure my item property is set to defaults and the SharePoint list. So let's add a couple navigation buttons, nothing crazy. So this one is going to navigate to screen two. So nothing special about the button. It's just going to navigate us to the next screen. Same thing with this one. It's just going to navigate us to the next screen. It should be screen three. All right. 
And then our last button is going to be our submit button. Okay. And this is where we're going to put our patch command and this is where we're going to do our updates on our form. Very simple code, but very effective. So let's use our patch. So we're going to patch the data source. We're going to use our defaults command with our data source to create one whole record. And then after that, we're going to take each one of our forms and pull an update from that. So we're going to say form five dot updates form six dot updates and of course whatever form that you have you would use your form name and form seven dot updates and what this does is it goes back through each one of the forms and pulls the update for that particular form entry and then it's going to submit it all at once into the SharePoint list. But we do need to add a couple items to this. We need to have new forms created for us once this is submitted. So we want to make sure we have new forms once this works. We also might want to add a, a notify command just to let them know that they submitted data. And really this is all uh, user stuff. You don't really have to add any of this stuff in, but you can if you want to. And then the last thing I want to do is navigate to screen one, back to the main screen where we started from. All right, let me make this a little bit bigger. So just to walk through the code, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to patch to the data source. We're going to pull the default information and create a new record into that database. Then we're going to take our forms and we're going to update each one of those forms with the information. Then we're going to create new forms for a submission and then notify and navigate back to, to the original screen. All right, let's give it a shot. Last thing I forgot to do is set your forms to new mode or they're not going to display. So over here on the right, we're going to click new same thing for this one, new, and the last one. Yeah. Now we can play our app. All right. We got John Doe, and his number is 8675309, uh, 87 Tiger Way could be his address. That's our next button. So he's male and he's three foot six. And he weighs 160 pounds. Onto our next screen. It's white. And we can attach a file. I'm just gonna attach something. Doesn't matter what it is. And click our submit button. Our data has been submitted. If we check our SharePoint list, here we are. We have John Doe, we have his number, his height, but 
Remember, I had attachments. So once again, when you're using a patch statement, a direct patch, you're not going to be able to enable attachments. You're not going to be able to take your attachments from your, your form and put it into your database. So what we're going to, what we're doing is we're creating essentially a form with a patch command. And so in order to make our attachments available, we have to add the column in. So right now I have all the main columns, but we're going to go over here to add a column. We're going to go to where it says show hide columns. And we're going to choose the attachments column and hit click apply. And notice when I do that, here is my attachments. So it allows us to pull the attachment in using a patch command. Want to learn more? Go to pragmaticworkstraining.com. We have a free seven day trial that you can sign up for. And we have app in a day where you can learn all about Canvas apps. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time. Oh,